This video is about how to graph trig parallel functions and also the properties of each trig function. So how to graph sine function. First of all, let's recall that unit circle. We know the coordinates will be C, S, T. So let's label the angle first. Here's 0 pi over 2 pi. Then you have 3 pi over 2. Then go back to x axis, that's a 2 pi. Okay, so find each coordinates for these uh, quadrantal angles. We want to graph a sine function. So basically, just look at the second coordinate and then the angle. When angle equals 0, then the second coordinate, that's a 0. So you will find the 0, 0 over here. Then when angle is pi over 2, then the second coordinate, that's 1. So you will find pi over 2, 1 is over here. So keep going. Pi, I have 0. That's over here. 3 pi over 2, that's negative 1. 3 pi over 2, that's a negative 1. Then go back to pi over 2, we still have 0. So that's over here. We call these five points, it's a key points. So whenever you want to draw the sine function, you need to find out five key points. So I smoothly connect this. That's graph for sine function. Then you can extend the graph to the left side. So the pattern will be like this. It's like a wave. So let's look at the property of this uh, sine function. Domain definitely that's uh, all real numbers. Yeah, let me write down this way. Or you can write down from negative infinity to positive infinity. Either one will be okay. Range. That means the uh, highest. Uh, value for y and the lowest value for y definitely is between negative 1 to 1. Period means for how long and then it's keep repeating. Then you could see that's between 0 to 2 pi. So every 2 pi the graph repeating. So that's period is 2 pi. So for this sine function, symmetric at uh, origin, I just put the 0, 0. So whenever the graph of any function symmetric at uh, origin, then we call this is a odd function. For the x-intercept, it will be 0. Then you have pi, 2 pi, then negative pi, negative 2 pi. You can keep going, that's a negative 3 pi, 3 pi, and a 4 pi, 5 pi, keep going. So we can write down that's a k pi, and a k is a integers. 
use Z stand for the integer. For integers, thus you have negative integers and positive integers, and also zero. For the v intercept, that's definitely it's a zero zero. Maximum will be one at. So let's check back. It's a pi over two. You no, know, it's this point. Then you have over here negative three pi over two. Since sine function, the period is two pi. So every two pi repeating, I can write down pi over two. Then I add period that's uh, two pi. Then times uh, k. K stand for the integers. Yeah, let me write down the meaning for z. Z means uh, integers. It will be zero, one, two, three. Keep going forever. And R is negative one, negative two, negative three, then keep going forever. So we will write down this. That's the meaning for Z. Then for this sign function, we know that at the two pi, the sign function has a maximum value one. So every two pi repeating. That's why I add two pi times k. For minimum value, that's a negative one. So minimum value it shows negative pi over two. So you will see it will happen at negative pi over two. But every two pi repeating. So I add 2 pi times k. Still, k will be integers. Now let's graph cosine function. Same step, I will label here's a 0 pi over 2. Here's pi, 3 pi over 2. Then you have 2 pi. Then label the coordinates. This is one zero, zero one, zero one, and negative one zero, zero negative one. Since we're looking for the cosine function, we don't need the tangent function. So I don't write down the tangent function for the coordinates. And we know that's the first one. That will be the value for cosine. And I will find the points 0, 1. That's over here, 0, 1. And pi over 2, 0 now. Pi over 2, 0. Pi negative 1, pi negative 1. And 3 pi over 2, 0 is here. Then 2 pi is 1. You will find the 5 key points again for the cosine function. So I will connect those 5 key points now. And you can extend this uh, cosine function like this. We can compare to the sine function. For sine function, it's like a wave. You know, like this. But 
for the cosine function, it's kind of like V, you know, like this. You remember this pattern. This is a sine function, and here's a cosine function. But how to remember? Think about your pull from bottom, then you will got graph like this. This one is will be negative sine x function. Then if you pull from here, you will get like uh, this, you know, it's kind of like a cosine function. That's how to remember. So let's talk about property of the cosine function now. Domain definitely is all real numbers. Range, maximum value is one, minimum value is a negative one. Period, every two pi repeating. Symmetric at y axis. That we call even function. So for the graph of a function is a symmetric at y axis. That's an even function. For the x intercept, you could have find it's a pi over two. Then you have negative pi over two, three pi over two, negative three pi over two, you know, Next one will be 5 pi over 2. Then you have negative 5 pi over 2. Keep going. So I can write down like this. Here's pi over 2. That negative pi over 2. Then 3 pi over 2. You have negative 3 pi over 2. So keep going. Then the pattern look like pi over 2 plus k times pi. And uh, k will be integers. For the y-intercept, it goes to 0, 1. So for the maximum value, that's 1. Where is it? So let's look at that. It's a go to zero. Then they go to two pi. So next will be four pi. And over here is a negative two pi. So basically, I will write down zero. Then you add two pi. You keep adding or subtract two pi. So I do the two pi times k. And k will be integers. So for this zero, you don't have to write down. Just write down 2 pi times k. For minimum value negative 1, 1, it's a negative pi, pi. Then you will get negative 1. But you can predict it will be 3 pi, and you will get negative 3 pi. So basically, that's pi, you add 2 pi times k, because every 2 pi repeating, k will be integers. Mm -hmm.